Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kryptonized. Joining me is a very different guest. In fact, uh, you go by the name of Root. Is that correct? Yeah. And why why are you wearing this mask? Why are you anonymous? Well, privacy uh, is an important uh, thing, and uh, especially with Bitcoin, you know, because we don't know how Bitcoin will behave in the future. I mean, if the price goes you know, 10 or 100 X, like, do you still want to be, you know, do you want to be public? Uh, you know, there's all kinds of reasons uh, why privacy is important. Another reason for me is like, it, it, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter so much who I am. It matters more what I have to say. And, you know, I'm, I'm, in a way, I'm more free. I can freely speak to uh, if I'm not myself. Right. And, and so are you bringing up topics that some governments might not appreciate? Uh, is that why? Not really. I do market analysis in general. So my focus is on uh, on-chain and cycle analysis of Bitcoin. Um, but, uh, you know, since it's about Bitcoin and, you know, Bitcoins are like, might replace the current monetary system. So, you know, there's, uh, you know, I don't know how much, you know, it's, it's better to be careful. A little bit. Okay. When you talk about analysis, you're really talking about on-chain and cycle analysis, am I correct? Yeah, exactly. And could you explain what that is? Yeah. So in traditional markets, you have TA, technical analysis, and uh, basically, uh, you know, technical analysis is uh, all these indicators that, you know, there's thousands of indicators in, in, in technical analysis, but they're all based on actually just price and volume. Those are kind of the only two inputs. Yes. Now with Bitcoin, we have a ledger, the blockchain, um, what, what, it contains all the transactions, the whole history of Bitcoin. And so um, we have a lot more info and on-chain analysis uh, focuses on, you know, analyzing that ledger and, um, you know, use it as another tool next to TA to, uh, you know, get a better view on the market. So you're looking at uh, just movements around volume, movements around uh, price, but there's not really, it's not like with stocks, right? It's not like there's no fundamentals that you're looking at, or is there? Yeah, I mean, so on chain, we can see all transactions. So we can look at, uh, you know, the age of coins moving. Uh, we can uh, we can look at spending behavior in general, and so um, you know those things. We can actually look at the price versus uh, you know at which moment in time are some coins purchased. So we can even like uh, figure out what is uh, the average purchase price of, of Bitcoin, which is called realized price in uh, in, in the on chain world, which is one of the more fundamental things of on chain. And so we have a better view of like how much money is actually invested in 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 Bitcoin. You know, in, in, in traditional finance, you would only have, for example, the market cap. The market cap is not really very representative because you know everyone purchased at a different price, right? Yeah. And uh, so so uh, in on chain, we can actually have a better view on those things. Okay. And you know, when you're talking about on chain analysis, is that's something that you can use to predict the future price of Bitcoin. What are you using that analysis for? Yeah, so it's one tool in a toolkit, you know, to to look at mark at the market. Um, it's not perfect for short term predictions, um, uh, but it's it's relatively good to look at like where are we in the cycle, and um, also you know at what stage kind of are we at and. Uh, so I think for like the medium to long term, it's it's a, it's a very good tool. And are you tracking the wallets of whales as, as well, or big institutions? Do you, do you yeah. have that kind of data? Yeah, yeah. We can look at we can even look at so the average purchase price of the whales in the market. Yeah. So so that is very interesting data that you could not get in you know traditional finance. Uh, do you feel like these whales are manipulating the markets? Is that what your analysis shows, or is it is it not that simple? I don't really that think that they're manipul heavily manipulating the market um, but they do have I, I mean we we can still see that uh, they're still in profit at least you know. yeah are they trading together as a as a one big whale family <laughs> or is it uh, is it all across the board you no know, I do think uh, there's many individual participants in the market uh, Bitcoin is already at that stage I mean you could even see like I mean Elon Musk for example could influence the market but you know only by so much right yeah. I think his influence now is already a lot less and so uh, you know 
people can manipulate the Bitcoin market because it's still relatively a short, like a small market. If you look at it in terms of percentages of the amount of money that is there in the world, Bitcoin is just a fraction. But uh, so, so in that sense, it's still a little, there's some sensitivity to manipulation. But I think in general, uh, it's it's becoming harder and harder. Yeah, because you know there's a lot of conspiracy theorists that say all the rails are kind of controlling when the price comes up and down. But that's not what your analysis shows. Well. I mean, in a way, in a way, I mean, whales can temporarily, like, you know, shift the market a little bit, uh, you know, they can sell. So people, you know, become scared and sell as well and then buy back, you know, like I, I, I'm sure this kind of manipulation happens at some scale, but they also have to be careful, right? Because Bitcoin can suddenly make big moves at any moment in time, practically. So they could also lose out. It's, it's, a, it's a risk that they are willing to take probably. Okay, and then uh, my last question is: You said this is just one tool, the toolkit for predicting fluctuations in Bitcoin's price. What other things do you look at in order to really determine? You know, we're in a bear market now. When do we get out of the bear market? And something more bullish. Yeah. So, so we have TA. You know, um, we look, for example, at funding rates because now, uh, you know, the for example, futures and options. Uh, the market got a lot more complex in, in this cycle. So uh, so those are the main things I look at. So uh, TA on chain and uh, like funding rates, for example. And so so it's a, it's a combination of those uh, to get a better view of the market. But my my main focus is on on chain. Just, you know, I'm most specialized in that, but I, I definitely follow other accounts that do TA as well to get a better view of where we are. And now, where are we in the market? <laughs> you know, I think we're like in a bottom formation uh, we're below this average price that we just mentioned, real yeah. price, which only happens during like bear markets, you know, during a bottom formation yes. in the bear market. And we are there now. And so I think this can continue maybe until the end of the year or so. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll, we might go just to have like one more move down or so. It could definitely happen. I wouldn't rule it out at all. Uh, but I do think we're in this bottoming process. Now, the, the difference this time is that the whole macro situation is a lot different. So, uh, you know, it's difficult. Um, to look at historic data and, and say like, you know, can we compare this cycle with previous cycles considering this, you know, uh, different environment that we're currently in. Uh, but so far, if we look at the cycle in terms of like the cycle, you know, which is initialized by the halving, the Bitcoin halving, um, you know, works in a term of like four years. And, and so if we look at the four year cycle in Bitcoin, we are very uh, much in line with previous cycles actually. So far, there's not really a trend change that would indicate that, that Bitcoin is really behaving different in the four-year cycle. So we haven't seen that yet. So, so it also gives a bit of confidence that Bitcoin is still its own asset. And I think in general, there are a lot of people, and we can see it again at the conference, that have a high conviction of, uh, of Bitcoin and are willing to hold Bitcoin throughout all volatility. But you're looking at the, the on-chain analysis of this, and you can see whether people are actually holding or not. Yeah. So are uh, most holding or most selling? Or yeah. No. Actually, um, people are holding really well, and so um, yeah. So my focus has been uh, lately a bit also on digital scarcity, or so on-chain uh, way to look at on-chain scarcity. Yeah. And interestingly, uh, that was what my presentation was about as well. For instance, it will be published on uh, on, on YouTube, I'm sure. Um, they. You can see that around that third halving, Bitcoin was actually the most abundant in terms of supply. If we look at, you know, so if we divide all of Bitcoin supply up into different categories of spending behavior, so we can see that the hodlers of Bitcoin um, in, you know, are growing actually this cycle. So since the third halving, it has been, uh, you know, outperforming uh, the new supply issues. So, so Bitcoin is actually getting more scarce since the third halving, which is kind of a trend change because from the beginning, from actually since, since Bitcoin started until that third halving, Bitcoin was actually becoming less scarce because we had like obviously just the, the general inflation in Bitcoin, but also kind of the, the growth rate of, of those hodlers uh, that, that represent the, the liquid supply within Bitcoin um, that was um, that was growing not at the same pace as there was inflation and so Bitcoin was actually becoming less scarce uh, or, or more abundant uh, towards that third halving but since that third halving uh, the trend change has been made where Bitcoin is now becoming more scarce again so 
so that's actually very bullish for the next cycle. Uh, now, obviously, demand currently is gone. You know, we are in a bear market. Uh, there is very low demand for Bitcoin. You know, all only the hoppers are, are are there. Like all tourists, uh, tourists left. So, uh, so we have to wait on new demand. But it's very likely that uh, that uh, in the next cycle, and I, I I don't expect this to happen until after the next halving. But I do expect after the next halving for to demand to come back. We we will get a new hype. Uh, know uh, wave in, in in bitcoin it will take time these things take time to develop and we can see that we you know on average we had only one of those hype waves per cycle right and we've had it this cycle and now it's kind of waiting until you know after the next having for the next one hmm. okay well with that where do people find you online you have a youtube channel I don't, I'm not on YouTube, I'm only on Twitter mainly. Okay. Uh, I post my work on Twitter, so you can follow me at, at the rational Root on Twitter. Okay, but you mentioned that there's going to be a YouTube video on what your talk I, uh, My talk from uh, from uh, here the conference will be published on the, on the Bitcoin Magazine channel. Okay, we'll find that link, we'll post it in the show notes. Really appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, and, thank you uh, very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Hello, Kryptonized fans. I've got a special token that I'm recommending for you. You've been following this show. We don't play any games. We'll tell you what tokens we like, what we don't. We have guests that come on and try to convince us. And you know the drill. But this one's a sure winner. And that is Tetragard. 